In this video, we're gonna go over the Elgato video capture device in depth. We're gonna unbox the item, and then we're gonna go do a deep dive into the software on a Windows PC. So let's get started. So what I've got here is the Elgato video capture card as it comes to you when it's gonna get dropped off at your doorstep. Uh, so let's open it up, take a look and see what's inside. Looks like we have a box inside of a box. And inside this package, yep. So we have a standard uh, set of RCA adapters so that way we don't have to find the pair that we lost 20 years ago with our original VCR. Looks like we have an S-cart adapter for anything that requires the conversion. And then here is the Elgato video capture device uh, with your standard S-port and then your uh, RCA jacks for audio and video. And then of course the piece that's gonna go into your computer so that we can transfer it into a PC whether it's a laptop or a Windows machine and, uh, and that side. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the software. And while I get things ready over there, if you wouldn't mind, but if you could install that subscribe button down there for me and press the like button so that the YouTube algorithm will let people know that I'm here to try to help you, it'd be much appreciated. So now that we're on the Windows system, let's go ahead and open up our browser. And we're gonna go to, out to the Elgato website, elgato.com, and I'm gonna put the, all of the links in the description down below in case you need to know what they are or need to find them. And once we're here on the website, if you go under the three lines over here and you go to the capture devices, you'll see the Elgato video capture uh, device here listed on the screen. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. And then we're gonna scroll down just a little bit and right below the first picture there, you're gonna see download and support. So let's go ahead and go to download and support and then come down here and these first link here, you're gonna see download Elgato video capture software for Windows and the download driver for the Elgato video capture. I would go ahead and grab them both and go ahead and install them on your Windows machine. So once you get the software installed, you'll wanna go ahead and click on the Elgato video capture icon that was put on your desktop or it could be underneath your start button. If you forget to plug in your Elgato device, it will warn you and tell you that you need to plug in the device, otherwise it won't start up the software. From here, it's gonna come up and it's gonna ask you, what would you like to name the file that the actual Elgato software is going to capture? So you wanna put in the tape name of what it is you record. I'm gonna do an old whitewater rafting video of mine, so I'm gonna call it whitewater. Then from there, you go ahead and you can set how long do you want the Elgato software to capture the video for. I'm gonna go ahead and set it for 30 minutes because I know that my entire tape is no longer than about 22 minutes long. Now on this screen, you have a couple of options to change the resolution or the video quality of what the software is going to record. To change those, you're gonna to wanna to go under preferences and you'll see the screen that kind of popped up here. Now you have a couple of different options by default, uh, you might or might not have these checked. And if we uncheck the top two, what's going to happen is the Elgato video software is going to store the video that it recorded in the native format of the VHS tape, which is going to be 320 by 240. Now, that is a little bit misleading when you read the description here because if you click the high resolution and then you click on preserve source format, you would think that that might be actually recording the original 320 by 240, but it doesn't. Um, if you only do the high resolution and it needs a fast PC, then it's going to do a 640 by 480, but if you do the high resolution and the preserved source format, it's going to do a 720 by 480. The other thing you can do too is you can change the folder where your video is gonna be stored. Now by default, I think it puts it all in videos, uh, but you can also choose your documents folder or even just have it put it on your desktop. I've chosen other, and that way I can save it to a specific folder related to this video. So go ahead and hit okay if you've made any changes, or if you have it, it'll recognize that and your only option is cancel. From here, go ahead and hit the continue button. And now we will choose the type of input that we're either going, we're either doing S video or we're doing the composite RCA jacks. In my case, I'm doing the composite RCA jacks. And you'll notice that it's a blue screen. If I click on the S video, you'll notice that it comes up with no signal. And that is because there's nothing plugged into that port. So I'm gonna switch back to the composite RCA jacks and you'll see it kind of flip over on the screen there. And then you can choose here at this point, either a four by three or a 16 by nine uh, stretch resolution. Now be aware, VHS tapes are in a four by three format. So doing a 16 by nine, unless you had some movie or something like that that you were converting, generally speaking, home movies are probably all going to be in a four by three. 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and continue to the next page. From here, this is where you would test your audio before you start recording. I know it's hooked up correctly, but I'll hit play just so you can see that it goes ahead and it shows you the bars here as they go. Now, if I hit stop on the VCR, the bars will slowly go back down. Once you're done checking the audio, you go ahead and hit continue. And then here, we're gonna go ahead and hit start recording on the Elgato software, and then we're gonna push play on the VCR. That's gonna start playing, playing the video, and it's gonna start writing it out or capturing it to your computer. Now, it will sit here and play the video for approximately 30 minutes, or in this case, there's 29 left because we've used a little bit of time up. And I can do two things here. One, if I recognize that this is going to take longer than what I originally set it for, I can just tell it to ignore that by checking that box. And if I wanted to listen to the video while it's playing, well, I would hit the mute button so that I could hear the sound again. Here comes our next raft. We're gonna win. Now, in this case, because I'm doing a video, I'm gonna leave it muted so that that way we're not bothered by the background noise. So we would go ahead and let this play out for the entire video. And then after it's all done, it would either stop on its own or we could go ahead and hit stop recording. So I'm gonna hit stop recording now. At this point, you'll wanna push stop on your VCR. If it hasn't already stopped on its own, let's say maybe it's gotten to the end of the tape and it started to rewind. But now that it's all over, we're at an edit screen that Elgato will give you in their software, which is really handy. Now on this screen, the Elgato software is going to give you the ability to trim both the front and the back part of the video. That way you can remove any blue screens or white static or any other things like a TV commercial or something that you just wanted to trim from either side of the video. To do that, all you have to do is move the slider from the left over and you'll see it start playing the video. So let's say I wanna go past the little play sign. So as soon as I see the play remove itself, then I'll be happy. And then on the right side, I'm gonna trim the end. And I'm gonna move that back until I see people again. So now I have the piece of the video that I wanna actually export. I'm gonna go ahead and click continue. And you'll see the Elgato software now process that video and trim out that small piece. Now this could take a little bit of time, if, but just sit and watch it kind of complete what it does. It's pretty quick. Now at this screen, you have a few options. At the very top, you can actually click the folder here where the Elgato software says it stored the video to. You can click play with the Windows Media Player and it'll actually play the video for you in the, in the Media Player. You can add it to your library. You can add it to iTunes if you have iTunes installed, or you can actually load the Windows Live Movie Maker and go ahead and begin editing your video further. Now, if you don't have it and you click the button, it will give you the option to download. The YouTube button no longer works because YouTube must have changed their security controls, and it now will give you an error. Elgato just hasn't updated their software to, to keep it current. But no fret, you can take the video that you've uh, captured here with no problem at all, log into YouTube and just click the uh, Create Video and you can add it to your channel. Now at this point, you have two options. You can go ahead and click the again button and go back to the beginning and re-export another videotape or you can hit the quit button. I'm gonna hit the quit button because I'm almost at the end of my video. So let's take a quick look at the three different outputs that the Elgato video software does create for us. The 320 by 240, the 640 by 480, and the 720 by 480 output. Now, all of these are, of course, are in the four by three aspect ratio, but remember you can do each one of them in the 16 by nine also. So I hope you've enjoyed that review of the Elgato software and the deep dive into it, uh, plus the unboxing of what's in this magical little box here. As always, thank you for watching my video. I really appreciate your time you take to view these things. I'm having a great time doing it, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Catch you next time.